today we're talking about astral planning, which is in principle a fancy word for what should I shoot today? And I think I found the perfect way to figure that out. How that works? Right after the trailer. Hey, this is View Into Space. I'm Sasha from Switzerland. So great to meet you and thanks for watching my channel. So probably the most common way how this question is answered, what should I shoot tonight, is to go outside, take your planetarium app, just look around and oh, that might be interesting. At least that's how I did a lot of the time. And then there's the complete opposite. The people who really plan it out with specialized software. And at one point of time, some people ask me to review these kind of softwares. And I looked into it and quite honestly, I found it more confusing than helpful. And I think for these people of you who are blessed to live in Arizona or New Mexico or Utah or Spain, that might actually be great, these softwares. Because when you have 300 nights or whatever per year where you can shoot, it makes really sense to plan it through so that for each object you have exactly the perfect night. So we have these two extremes. The very spontaneous, just looking up what's there, and the very planned out version with software. So is there a middle ground? And I think these middle grounds got, got interesting about two years ago with something you might have heard of recently. Generative AI, ChatGPT. Does it ring a bell? So why it was nice to experiment with it, it was just not quite there yet and the results were not really satisfying. But as we know, there is no day when there's no news about Gen AI, when it gets better and better and better and better. Are we there yet? Yes, we are there yet for this purpose. And what made it possible is a functionality called deep research. Deep research is offered by different Gen AI providers. And what it really is, when we're talking about just chatbot, ChatGPT. What you're doing, you're asking ChatGPT something and it will look it a little bit up, will find a source and whatever it finds as a source, it will throw back to you. Sometimes it's better, sometimes it's worse and you have some conversation, you need some clarification, whatever. Chatting. Now deep research works differently and it's important to know that because also the way you prompt is very different. Because with deep research, you only have one shot. You send a prompt and deep research will do, quite literally, research. It will dive deep into the data, into sources, find something in one source, verify it, jump to another source and so on. And it might take an hour until the answer is back. And a lot of time it's really limited how many prompts you can actually submit by period, by months or so on. So what I did, I created a deep research prompt to come back with a monthly astro plan considering your location, your portal class and your equipment. And I did that with two deep research versions. On one side, perplexity. On the other side, ChatGPT. We will look at that in a moment on my PC. Now, what's the difference? First of all, perplexity is free. I will put a link to it in my description. There is a web version, there's an app, and you can simply click on deep research, send the prompt, and by the way, I will put the prompt also in the description below and it will do some deep research and come back with the report. How good is it? It's quite good, but it's not as good as ChatGPT. 
with ChatGPT, it is only a few days old that plus subscribers, so the ones who pay $20 per month, can actually use deep research. And it is very restrictive. You only have 10 prompts you can send per month. With a pro version, which is $200 a month, I think you can do it unlimited. But I mean, that's another price ticket. With ChatGPT, you need to have a subscription to use the deep research function. The great part about ChatGPT is that when you send the deep research prompts, it will come back and ask you some clarification questions. And some of these clarification questions I already implemented now in a prompt that you find in the description. For example, I forgot to enter the Bordel class and it asked me, can you give me the Bordel class of your region? It also wanted to know, do you want to have the recommendations for a full moon or for a new moon? I decided to go with a new moon, stuff like that, really interesting. The result I got back from ChatGPT is really great. It's really nothing pseudo anymore, it's not a game anymore, it's really something you can use. And you could extend this prompt and for example, list all the objects that you already shot that you do not want to shoot anymore and it will exclude them. So there's really a lot of potential. You could also limit it to only galaxies or only nebulas. You could exclude stuff like planets and so on. So I really want to show you now on my computer the prompt, how to enter it, how these two applications actually work and how the output, the reports look like. And I'm almost sure when you've seen it, this will be a monthly ritual also for you to actually get your own report. And with perplexity actually, it's free. So let's go now to my computer. Okay, welcome to my computer. I first wanna show you the two AI tools and how to activate deep research. And then we will actually look at the prompt and also at the output and what the difference is. So I stated the two tools that you can use, there's might some other ones and probably there will be more and more, but the ones that I use is Perplexity. Link I stated is in the description below. It's free. And when you are here in Perplexity, just change here auto to deep research. And that's all you have to do. To my knowledge, in the free subscription, you have three deep research searches per day. And also as stated before, in perplexity, you enter the prompt, you click activate and you wait. There's nothing happening else. Input and output. So let's go now to chat GPT. You need here the plus subscription to be able to do deep research. First of all, you activate here deep research. And as you also see, eight available until April 15th. So you have 10 per month, which is not a lot. So really only use them if you need that quality. I sometimes, if I want to do deep research, but it's not so important, I use perplexity. And if I want to really have the best quality for some things, then I use ChatGPT. In ChatGPT, there's something else you have to do. You go up here to the model, and instead of 4.0, you choose 03 mini high. It is very, very confusing the way ChatGPT labels their models. You would assume that 4.0 is better than 03, but actually these 03 models, they're really made for reasoning. And so whenever you do deep research, choose the O3 mini high, so that's the most optimal one. And then when you actually activate your prompts, it will come back with certain clarification questions, you will answer them, and then it will do the deep research. ChatGPT has longer than perplexity, because it also goes much deeper. But quality, as stated, is excellent, and we will see that. But now let's go to the prompt and to the output that I got. 
and I use for both versions the same prompt. Create a comprehensive astrophotography planning document for April 2025. I obviously thought I would do it for the whole year, divide it by month. It would be much more comfortable and I would only have to do one re deep research. Turns out that's not gonna fly, that's too much information. It just did the first month nicely and afterwards it just did something which was not usable. So you have to do it by months and obviously you have to specify exactly which months you want. Optimize specifically for observations from Basel, Switzerland, whatever your location is, which is a Bordel 5 area. So apply your Bordel area. Assume that it is new moon. That was my assumption. If you would like to have a report for full moon, just specify it. Only include objects clearly visible and optimally positioned for imaging from this location. Next, we specify the rigs. Provide astrophotography object recommendations specifically tailored for each of the following rigs. And then you enter all your rigs that you have. And for testing, I really use the variety, some of which I do not own. Unfortunately, I do not own yet uh, <laughs> an 11 inch SCT. I would love to, but I still wanted to see what it comes out with. I also combined it with the camera and, and with if it's one shot color or monochrome. I also added here what filters I have. So you can go into as much detail as you want. And obviously the more detailed you are in specifying your rigs, the better the quality of the output will be. I even added the SIBO C star and it recognized it. So it knows what it is. So we're now at a time where it always takes real life information from the internet. So everything that's out, it will know it. For each rig, list the top 10 optimal astrophotography objects sorted from most suitable, best to least suitable. Still very good. For each listed object, include the following detailed information. So that's what I came up with, but you can extend that or take stuff away which you feel you do not need. Again, really flexible. Ensure object selection considers visibility from Switzerland, suitability for each rig's focal length, and camera capabilities and overall astrophotography appeal. For example, color richness, structure detail, and visual complexity. Prioritize targets based on the peak altitude and ideal imaging conditions throughout April. And as I mentioned before, again, what you really wanted to prioritize, what it should exclude, what it should include, you can all specify that here. This is your list and as this is just clear text, it is so much easier than all these softwares where everything is really rigid and you have to see how exactly can I specify it. This just feels, at least from my point of view, much more natural. Present this information in a clear, structured and user-friendly format for easy reference during astrophotography planning sessions. So that's also a crucial part whenever you do deep research. Be very clear what you want to receive. It can be as long or as concise as you need it. It can be free text, it can be a table, bullet points, be specific. So based on this prompt, what did I get back? We start with perplexity. Comprehensive astrophotography planning guide for April 2025, blah, blah, blah. It starts here with the first rig and then it gives me the 10 objects. It lists the criteria that I gave it exactly in this order and just goes from one to the next. And obviously this is a very, very, very long list. It's about 18 pages or so. What do I like about it? Well, it provides all the information that I asked. It prioritizes, the objects make more or less sense. It also has a nice little text at the end. So. It's good. It's what I asked it to do. It did it. It did it well. And that for free. What don't I like that much? The way it lists it, it gets quite lengthy. So with that, we come to what ChatGPT provided to me. That starts here. Astrophotography targets April 2025. 
gives a little bit of summary and then it starts with the first rig. And what you will note here is that it actually groups stuff together. So for example here, the high level data, the type, the magnitude, the size, it puts it in one. And that just makes it a lot shorter, more compact. It's easier to read. And again, it did exactly what I stated, 10 per rig. And also that is obviously a very long list. So from a comparison point of view, here you have both objects, once the output from perplexity, one the output from chat GPT. And it's quite interesting to compare it. For example, ideal imaging dates. Here we have April 10 to 25 after 10 p.m. Here we have April 10 to 30th after 9 p.m. I mean, it's a little bit different, but still it's quite consistent. Recommended filters for one shot color camera are non needed. ChatGPT proposes the L Pro based on that it's in a Bordel 5. So it takes that into account. I think that's kind of cool. Exposure times. Here we have six to eight hours. Here we have four to six hours. It might actually take into account that we use an L Pro, I don't know. But again, interesting and not so far apart. Also interesting, the, the special notes. For example, Perplexity finds that with the 103 APO, I would actually need multiple panels to capture the full extent. It also mentions that longer integration time helps real faint the cluster members. Okay. And then on the other side here, ChatGPT rather feels that with 700 millimeter, you can frame the central chain within your field. So it actually gives me a proposal how to best frame it. It also recommends to go for the moonless nights in middle late April for best contrast, which for a non-narrow band target absolutely makes sense. Focus carefully to resolve galaxy cores and use dithering to reduce noise as you stack. I mean, the dithering is kind of a no-brainer and not really related to the object, but focus carefully to resolve galaxy cores is kind of a good tip because it really is more important than with an Ebola. So here really it's a question of taste and budget. I think absolutely perplexity does a good job and for that it's free. It is an absolutely viable choice. Personally, because I also use for other things ChatGPT and anyway have the plus version, I prefer the way it actually organizes it and displays it. I think the main conclusion from this whole exercise is that this is something that really makes sense at this point of time. This is a list you really, really can use and is helpful and is probably almost as helpful as any specialized software and obviously better than any general um, sky review or you know newsletter or whatever because this is really tailored to your situation to your location and to your equipment i hope that was helpful i hope that's something that you really can apply and if you have suggestions how to make this prompt even better for example, stuff that we should add to the prompts for the AI to consider. Then by all means, please add this in the comment below. And if you want to follow this closely, always have access to the most up-to-date prompt or even new developments as every day, as I said, there's something new in Gen AI, which will make that even better. Then my Patreon channel is the perfect place to find all that, link is in the description below. See you next time and clear skies.